And I want to, I want to unpack that a little bit more, but just before we do, I wanted to parse apart the different types of fear that you talk about. So you have a couple of chapters uh, that you title the anatomy of fear, and there's three different fears that you go through. And I would love for you to walk us through each of them so that we can begin to see where we do have fear in our life, where it's potentially justified and where we can begin to alter our responses to them. Absolutely. So the three types that I identify in my book are healthy, real, and theological. So healthy fear is like it sounds. It's set up for our survival and protection. It's there to keep us safe. So for instance, if there's a, an open flame or a fire pit, you know not to go too close. Something cautions you because if you do, you could get burned. Same thing if you know if you go hiking up in a canyon and you get too close to the edge of a cliff, something, right? You even feel it in your chest or your stomach to move back, right? It warns you, it cautions you. Intuition is also part of the same thing. That sixth sense feeling you get. I've certainly gotten it when I'm about to go into an elevator and somebody's in there and just like, hmm. Something doesn't really feel right here. And I'm going to honor that. Now, it doesn't mean that person is actually going to cause me harm. But if I have that feeling and it's unnerving enough, I will actually honor it. One of my favorite stories um, to uh, to explain this is the story of Carol Durange from Murray, Utah. And she was um, approached by a police officer one day while she was in a parking lot and he came over to her and said your car has been broken into and we've apprehended the suspect and we have some of your items from the car will you come to the police station with me to identify them so she got that feeling in her stomach of mm, not so sure about this she asked to see his identification so he did he showed her his badge and she reluctantly went along with him so they get into his car and they start driving down the highway and she notices they're going in the opposite direction of the police station so she says to him what are you doing this is not the right way and he's driving with one hand with his other free arm he's grabbing her trying to handcuff her and because she was already forewarned, she had her hand on the door handle and she was able to jump out of the moving car. He pulls over, he jumps out, a fight ensues on the side of the road, and miraculously, she actually escapes. Three days later, she's reading the newspaper. Two days later, she reads the story about that same afternoon that she was approached by this police officer. Another woman was approached as well, was raped and murdered. And this police officer was actually serial killer Ted Bundy. So it's an extreme example, but I think a really powerful one that those kinds of feelings, those healthy fears are necessary. Then there's real fear. So real fear is based in reality. It's as it sounds. It's fear of illness, of death, of aging, right? It's those things that actually do happen. But even with this fear, this can be transformed to be something that's useful for us, that is helpful. Meaning, for instance, I hear a lot of people, especially now during um, you know, COVID and so many people have so much loss with their loved ones. People really do fear, for instance, losing their parents, right? And I know some people who fear that they spend a lot of time ruminating that fear, right? Having that negative yes. thought play over and over in their head. So much so that when they're with their parents, they actually are not really with them or able to enjoy them because they're worried and thinking about this fear. So I think you can transform that by actually appreciating the time that you have with them in this moment, by saying that you love them, by giving them the benefit of the doubt next time you get angry at them or reactive, right? It's to fully use that fear, right, that that will happen for something that can be purposeful and meaningful in the now. The same thing with illness. If a person really is afraid of different things manifesting in their body, then look at how you spend your lifestyle and not just with food and exercise, but also with stress management, with how you how your thoughts are. Right. Because we know nothing's more damaging than that. So those are two fears that I actually say, OK, yes, they are necessary, but they need to be elevated. The one that we want to eradicate is illogical fear. And this, believe it or not, takes up about 98 percent of all our fears are illogical. And that is fear of um, spiders, heights, roaches, rejection, failure. Right. All of those things that keep us really stuck and stunted and don't allow us to go and pursue the things that we really want to. You want to write that book? You want to, you know, go and try to be an actress or whatever it is, most people, they're just so afraid of all of the things that might not be that they just say, okay, I'm not even going to try. And for me, that's the most damaging because you can really waste your life in that space, not doing what you meant you're meant to do or why you came to this world. 